random order. And if your name is not called out among these 10, then I can add you at this point. But once we start, nobody else gets added. So we got Noel, and I got George, I got Jim, Olivia, Lennon, Dan, who I call Stan, <laughs> Hannah, Diane, Mila, Newton, Hunter. And did I say Noel's name yet? Yes. yes. Noel twice. That <laughs> right the twice. List. Anybody else? Uh, I, did Hannah, did I not call your name? No, you did. He I may have called your name or I may not have, but you're on the list, okay? Rebecca, a number between 1 and 10, please. 9. 9. That means that Lennon is going to be our first slammer. Stay where you are, Lennon. We should get to calibrate the judges first. Yeah. Sometimes the top is on the bottom. Like right here. There. Lennon, I need a number between 1 and 10. No repeats, please. 3. Good call. No 10. <laughs> May I have a number between 1 and 10, please? Two. Nice call. Mila! <laughs> Where are you, darling? Where's Mila? There you are, of course. Uh, seven. Seven. She's got a brand new number that nobody called. She paid attention. Jim. Did you pay attention? Yeah, because I know nobody's called 10 yet. <laughs> nice call, Dan. A number ten between ten one and ten. ten. One. <laughs> ten call. Just barely. One. <laughs> nice, Hannah. I like this name. He's, he has a list of all the poets. Oh, yeah. He's putting them all up It's a palindrome. Look at that. Lennon, do you know what a palindrome is? No. What is it? No. Oh, you don't know. <laughs> Hunter, do you know? No. Mila, do you know? No, well, you know what a palindrome is. Yeah, what? You know what a palindrome is. is. Do you know like, like, like a race car or you a don't. taco cat? Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. 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 Do you want to say? So it's, it's the same thing spelled forward and backward. Excellent. Woo. And then we have words that are just backwards. They say something different. That's kind of fun, too. Like dermatitis, sit tight on red. Who <laughs> knew? Yeah, who knew? Revolution? No shoe lover? Constitute? Oh, man, you'll have to work that out. Oh, Constitute. Two. Tits. Knock. Constitute. Oh. Two tits. Knock. Hannah. Yes, it is. Yes. That's what it is. <laughs> Hannah, I need a number between one and ten. It hasn't been called yet. Four. Excellent. Hunter. Five. <laughs> and that's Noel. Um, oh, the pressure's on. Two? <laughs> Eight? Ooh, good call. <laughs> Olivia! Uh, oh, boy. Five. Mm -hmm. No, Hunter, you said five. Didn't you? Where are you, I'm Olivia? here. <laughs> Did you say five? I don't know, did I? <laughs> People really shouldn't be paying attention. No, she didn't. So I didn't say five. Uh, one. Yeah. Yeah. Mom. Uh, Fanny. Hold on. Oh, you only have one number left. What are you looking at the board? <laughs> I was counting to see how many we had. Yeah, we got ten, and uh, there was eight up. So that leaves you two numbers. That should be easy. 
Seven. Six. Six. Six was a good call. Are you slamming? And your name is? Yeah, uh, Izzy. Izzy? I met, met you before. She was <coughs> met you before. I Z Z Y. Are you slamming, sweetheart? Yeah. And your name is? Kaylee. Caitlin? Kaylee. Kaylee, K A I L Y. Do I remember it right? No. <laughs> <laughs> K A Y L Y. No wonder I didn't remember it right. K A Y L I. Thanks, Kaylee. Now, where were we? Did we get somebody up there? We got Olivia up there. And Olivia gave me a six, and that's George. George, have you been keeping track of the yeah. numbers? I want to add two. <laughs> I want to add an 11 and a 12, but try not to call those. <laughs> Did you say four? Yeah. That man pays attention. Of course, he's been to slams before. Yeah, he never pay attention. That's Hunter. I already went. Hunter's already up. Hunter's already up. He is already up. I, think that's I must have forgotten to cross him off. Yeah, that's ten. So, oh, where do we go here? Yeah, that's between 11 and 12. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I had to get off this floor. I'm not supposed to be on the board twice, Hunter. So, we yeah, got two numbers left. Yeah. Two numbers left. 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 Give me a number between 11 and 12. <laughs> 13. 13. I'm going to call that Kaylee. <laughs> and we'll finish off with Oopsie. Kaylee. A number, please. 11. Excellent. <laughs> Izzy. I'm going to put her way over here. That's Kaylee. Oh my God. So this is going to be an elimination slam, which is to say that the three top scorers will come back for a second round of a slam off round. Now, Izzy, you've only got one poem. I can see it in your eyes. <laughs> you were looking put. Pained when I, I said that. Book full of them. <laughs> She's got a book full of them. I have one poem. I have one poem. So, I have two. Those of you who only have one will read. I'm going to read my favorite. Person. If you make it into the slam off round, you will say the same poem over, but you'll say it in a different way. So that way you're still in the running for the fabulous prizes which are up there and which I shall award to all three of the people in the playoff, unless there's a tie and we have four or five people in the playoff, and then I'll award them to the top three winners. Well, we have judges. When I call your name, judge, please step forward and receive the approbation of this extraordinary audience. <laughs> Our first judge of the day is Rick. Go, Rick! Go, Rick! Awesome, Rick! He's right there, right? <laughs> oh, he's invisible. God, I don't know what happened to him. I know how bad like Rick. I know how bad <laughs> He did not want to judge, but he, he agreed and he snuck out. What is your name, please? <laughs> Stephanie? What qualifies you to be a judge? Not much at all. Basic arithmetic? <laughs> now, if Rick comes back in, boo him. So, our first judge, please step forward when your name is called, is Michael! <laughs> Michael, I said, Michael, what, what qualifies you to be a judge? And he responded, and I quote, um, prior experience, 
And that's about it. That's my call. <laughs> Qualified because, and I quote, I'm not cognitively here right now. <laughs> and we got Bruce! <laughs> what qualifies you, Bruce, I asked, and Bruce replied with one single word, nothing. <laughs> She knows two words. What qualifies you, Peggy? She said, she did you one better. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> and finally, Stephanie. Oh, so much fun. <laughs> Stephanie is qualified because, quote, uh, what qualifies you, I said. She said, where are you? There you are. She said, not much at all. <laughs> Basic arithmetic? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the judges, I want you to say the pledge with me, please. <laughs> I will tell you. Repeat after me, please, with your right hand in the air. Stephanie, you can. Hi. Hi. Fill in your name. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, start I. I. In your name. Michael. Do hereby affirm. Do hereby affirm. That I shall remain objective throughout the slam. That I shall, that I shall remain objective, objective, objective throughout, the slam. throughout the slam. Not giving unnecessarily high scores. Not, not giving unnecessarily, unnecessarily high, scores. high scores. To my sweethearts. To my sweethearts. Or those who I wish would become my sweethearts. Or those who I wish would become my sweethearts. And nor giving nasty and low scores. Nor giving nasty and low scores. To those for whom I hold disdain. The verse is the best of them all, I can tell you already. <laughs> Further, Further I, understand I understand that I may give scores that I may, that I may give scores, scores all the way from zero. All the way from zero. zero. Which means don't quit your day job. Which means don't quit your day job. All the way up to ten. All the way up to ten. ten. Which means your poem and your performance blew my socks all the way to Toledo. Which means <laughs> your poem and your performance blew my socks all the way to Toledo. Usually they I'm listen so when sorry. I say this so that they can repeat me accurately. But you're pretty close anyway, Stephanie. Mm -hmm. Finally! <laughs> Finally! I absolutely oh, promise. I absolutely oh, promise. To return the scorecard. To return the scorecard. To the slam master. To the slam master. At the end of this. Is this legally binding? It's legally binding if the audience approves these five people to serve as judges. Woo! 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 You may return to your seats once you receive your scorecards. <laughs> <laughs> the official rules of slam from the Bible of Poetry Slam, Hewitt's Guide to Slam Poetry and Poetry Slam. Noel, does that look like me? Yes. Yeah. Is that? Yeah. My gosh. <laughs> The poet shall perform original work only without props, costumes, or musical accompaniment, accompaniment within three minutes, but with a 10 second grace period in front of five judges who will score the work in a scoring range of zero to 10 with decimal points to one place and the highest and the lowest of those scores discarded. 
So what would be the highest score that a slammer could obtain? Yes, Noel. 30. Excellent, Noel. How many tens would a person need to get a 30? Four. <laughs> It's the first time somebody has gotten both questions <laughs> right. <laughs> the top scoring poets from round one proceeding to a slam off round two. As we all keep in mind, slammer Alan Wolf's injunction, the points are not the point. <laughs> the point is the poetry. Yes. Woo! Yes. I love it. All right. Who wrote those things? Folks, at every slam, there's a sacrificial poet. Mm -hmm. What did your eyes go way up in the air for you? <laughs> because I feel like a sacrifice already. You are not a sacrifice. I promise you that. Yeah. We'll see what your score is. Yeah, we'll, we'll see, see. yeah. <laughs> the sacrificial poet is a person who gives of his or her talent with no hope of winning the fabulous prize. <gasps> it's only for the judges to have an opportunity to set their particular base mark for scoring. <laughs> What's so funny about that, Jim? <laughs> I used the wrong word, right? It should be benchmark, but I said base mark <laughs> because I wanted to see you laugh. Good job. <laughs> the sacrificial poet is somebody who is so extraordinarily giving, and frankly, I shall be your sacrificial oh. Oh. I'll have to time this because it can't go longer than three minutes and 10 seconds. Half of me reclines on the cat. The other half hopes that he's okay. <laughs> Judges, this is the longest time you'll ever have for scoring. From now on, it'll be a lot faster. But right now, you're getting familiar with things, and I'm filling space by making noise on the count of three. One, two, three. Show me. I've got a 0 0.8. Boom. <laughs> A five point zero boo, or was that supposed to be a zero point five? That was a five point zero. Are you confirming? She confirms a five point one, a seven point eight, a zero point one, and an eight point zero. Oh, it's a ten from the very discerning judge over there named Lynn. Nine, twelve. 20.9 for your sacrifice. Please keep it going. Here's Lennon. Right. Thou art not as true as I, said he. Well, thou art not as see through as I, said I. I am not as dead as thee, said he. The end. Did you miss a stanza? <laughs> I think you missed a stanza. What? Open it up. I'm going to show you what I think you missed. At least I didn't hear it. Did you say those words? Yeah. You did. <laughs> I must have been daydreaming. Let's hear it one more time just for the fun of it. Thou art not as true as I, said he. Well, thou art not uh, as see-through as I, said, uh, said I. Well, I am not as dead, well, I am not as dead as thee, said he. There it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, typically, people get off the stage to make <laughs> <laughs> He wants to see a score. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we're, we're shy. 
Okay. Yeah. Judges on the count of three. <laughs> one, two, one, two, three. Let me see them. Ooh. I got a 6.8 from the meanie, a 7.5, a very confused judge with a 0 0.8. <laughs> <laughs> 8.0, 8. right? Yeah. <laughs> you hold it. You hold it the way that he sees. It's, yeah. it's uh, mathematically inclined, huh? Eight point zero, <laughs> a seven yeah. point a nine, and a nine point seven four. Carry eight eight six a twenty three point <laughs> five. <laughs> Got up this morning, started the day, the same old usual, same old way, poured a big steaming cup of words from Webster's unabridged. Then spill them out on some paper to poke around with my pen, picking my brain, pushing around random life worries, events, thoughts, spooning words into little piles and phrases, like arranging myself on a refrigerator door with little magnetic word blocks, sometimes spicy, romantic, or dicey, if nothing pitiful, perhaps political, glad, or sad, and before done, perhaps just writing something for fun. If the cup gets too dark, too strong, I may need to lighten up on some verbs, or sweeten up with some spoons full of adjectives. <laughs> Nothing like a strong cup of words to start the day. Words scrambled to tears, words arranged to laugh, words stacked in thoughts, words calling back memories drifting in space or lost around the corner of every crooked path, dancing words, singing the blues and twisting the wine from the depths of my soul. Perhaps you'd like a cup. Grab one up. Whether you've got something to say or not, you might as well. Ah, uh, to sit with a steaming cup and think about something, or nothing much at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> On the count of three, judges, one, two, three, show me your money. I got, a 6.5 from the Mimi, a 9.0, a 9.1, a 9.5, and a 9.7. Now, some of you may not be aware of this, but I think most of you are, that I am Vermont's reigning poetry slam champion. Yeah. <laughs> and what annoys me more than anything is that my score from these judges was a 20.9. <laughs>
and Lennon got a 23.4, that would make him the reigning Vermont Poetry Slam champion, except that Newton came along and dethroned him. What have we got in store for us now with all hell breaking loose? Let's hear from me a lot. Thank you. Uh, my poem is called Me Mom's Pot. The house is always sunny. When I push my brother in the water, my dad doesn't think it's funny. Uh, Loons are scary, picking berries, going for rides in Phil's truck, Wendy's fries, pizza pies, starry skies, flips on the trampoline, hooking worms even though it's mean, catching fish, letting them go, happy wi I'm happy winter's gone so I can swim in the water. On the count of three judges? Run. Run. I'm going to give you a little extra time. <laughs> Just ignore him. Ignore him. Ignore him. <laughs> I'm not talking to Two and a half. <laughs> two and three quarters. <laughs> Show me the money! Yeah! I've got ooh, a 6.0 from the new Mimi, a 7.3, a 7.7, a 7.8, and a 9.5! <laughs> about crows. I can't write about crows. My big brother told me they can count to three. And I've seen them flying by the hundreds, fleeing from the rising full moon. And after the snowstorm, five or six of them huddled in the middle of the side road, nodding their heads and plotting. Probably just searching for gravel for their gizzards. When I was a young man, I found a crow with a broken wing. I fed it, gave it a box to sleep in, perched it on my shoulder whenever I walked into town. One day, I guess the wing had healed, because that crow took off from my shoulder and never looked back. I had named that crow Mr. Something. I don't remember. For all I know, it might have been a female. You see, I don't know anything about crows. And they don't know anything about me. <laughs> Judges, on the count of three. One and a half. <laughs> Two and a half. Three, let me see. Um, ooh, what a split here. A 7.1, a 7.5, a 9.1, a 9.6, and a 9.7. Carry it to mm -hmm. 1, 8, 17, a 26.2 for you. Woo! Woo! Billy Collins once said on NPR that, I'll get this right, we're all born with 200 bad poems in us. <laughs> this is statistically proven, and high school is a good time to get rid of those. <laughs> Starter though, and well on my way to scrawling 200 bad, counting this one, now in the ovens so obliviously, convection's heating what's needed into form, another lazy loaf, almost ready for the has-been. Can't wait to see the alchemy of 201. Many known masters of metaphor keep on speaking in now analog and similes, as if improving art might be discontinuous, like not smelling the telling signs of baking barf 
about to count as 164, mm -hmm. can't wait to see the alchemy of number 201. By now, you might imagine this as rehearsing in reverse, pleading irony as simply satire, self-facing so prolifically, while banking on some poser's pith that tis all about how many grow stale and mold together in a dung heap dump of doggerel. Can't wait to see the alchemy of number 201. Preserving a line of this and a twist of that will not pardon preposterous pox of paradox and poppy seed in 43, or postpone the pig feet of fate of almost funny number 58 from being fat in Oban pan of sourdough for 166. Can't wait to see the alchemy of number 201. Judges are furiously scrambling. The audience, remember, your job is to uh, influence the judges. So if you don't like the score that they give, if it's too high, you can boo them. If it's too low, you can boo them. If you like the score, you can cheat. It doesn't matter. But we a little noise out of you when we see these scores on the count of three. What? Top three, I want to see them. I got, whoa, yeah, somebody likes that score. I got a 7.4. Boo! Boo! A 7.6. The guy who gave the 7.6 booed the 7.6. <laughs> An 8.1. Another 8.1. And an 8.3. A 23.8 for Dan. I want to hear from Hannah. Some of you have heard this before. It's called A Letter to Fairweather Friends. If you don't know what that is, those are friends who are only around when things are good and then they take off as soon as things get bad. I packed your emotional baggage in trunks and left them on the front step for pickup at your earliest convenience. Don't knock at the door when you come searching for pieces of yourself that you stashed in my cabinets for safekeeping. I no longer inhabit this house you helped me to build. The rooms we painted lie empty, and I have left no forwarding address. Stamp your regrets, return to sender, and don't bother to slip the postcards of the travels we planned under the door. I have locked the garden gate and thrown away the key, even as I still remember. You gave me your spine when I could not stand alone, rebuilt my shattered hourglasses when I thought my time was up, Patch the holes punched in the walls by careless cruelty. The space lingered between our words where once we talked until three in the morning, a void that grew and grew in a static vacuum, and sometimes there is nothing left to say. Only the echo of the door slam and whisper on the answering machine, the empty kitchen strewn with crumpled musical notes after the last song is finished. The party is over, but I will be sure to sweep the tiles before I leave, dry the dishes, stash them neatly in the pantry, put the chairs back, smooth the curtains, turn off the radio, close the door behind me, listen to the quiet, and whisper, thank you for stopping by. <laughs> <laughs> See me after the show, kid. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and the count of three judges would. Two, three, I want to see him. I go, ooh, yeah. A 1.1 1. 1 from the newest meanie of all. No, no. <laughs> 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 I got a 7.2, I got an 8.4, I got an 8.7, a 9.5, and a perfect 10. A 6.6. Now, Hannah, you may not be aware of this tradition in SLAM, but it's traditional <laughs> <laughs> that I play a little musical number for the first ten of the day. Now, uh, I want to call you Peggy. I hope that's okay. <laughs> Peggy, you gave the ten. So this song should also be for you, but Hannah earned it. Oh, and right. so I'm going to perform it for her, but listen carefully because you're in my heart. If you threw the, the ten away. Now I have perfect silence. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say that again? You threw the ten away. Yeah, I threw it away. But for it was a well-meaning ten anyway. I gotta get my musical instrument out. No. <laughs> That's how I tune it. A 7.6, a 7.9, an 8.5, an 8.6, and a 9.5! Let's see, 11.9.20, carry the 2.9, 8 is 17, and 8 is 25.0! Count of three. One, 
two, three. Let me see him. I got ooh, a 7.7. Seven. Boo. 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 Did you have them in the wrong order? Yes. <laughs> An 8.0, an 8.3, a 9.1, and a 9.3! Yeah. Go, 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 A 25.4! Oh, 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 Tailwind. Feel the wind on your back like a friend reassuring you. You got this. Each gust a breath, sweeping the dust off of self-doubt and negativity up into the air like leaves of yesterday. Trust the wind. She knows, as you do. Why you don't call it back wind? That's <laughs> a good point. I should have done that. You know, I, I like the thought of a tailwind, but then <laughs> carry it on in the poem. Let's hear about it. You know, oh my gosh, I should have worn something today. On the count of three, judges one, two, three, and a, see them. You're a little fast there. On eight point five. An 8.6, a 7.0, a 9.5, and a 9.6. Okay. And I'm at 26.6. I was inspired by you. <laughs> <laughs> Spank your hands for joy. <laughs> this poem is a result of an actual experience I had when I was in the fifth grade in Lindenville, Vermont. Racing in Lindenville. I could feel his hoofbeats pounding around the back side of the track. We were near the home stretch, and I clung to his back. I held the, heard the announcer say that we were way out front, and all of a sudden my horse took over and pulled an unexpected stunt. He galloped off the track out through the uh, cow barn gate to that place where I was about to meet my unexpected fate. He took a four hoof skid to a place of my wedding, and I went sailing over his head into a pile of <laughs> fermented bed bedding. <laughs> <laughs> I climbed back on, and down the home stretch we flew, and joined the rest of the pack before the race was through. In spite of the fact that I did not win, I was thankful for the place that I was in. Getting a lot out of losing may be the most important part of a slam. Any race the winner wins, he knew about before he was here. And for those of us who don't, do not win, it's a brand new experience. <laughs> you are right. On the count of three judges. One. I'm going to do it backwards. I'll start with three and I'll go to one. I'll give you a little extra time because I don't know the backwards numbers as well. Three, two, one. Hold them up. Awful early they were. Seven point three for George. Who? An eight point five. An eight point nine. Another eight point nine and nine point one. 
a 26.3 for George. I want to hear it for Katie Lee. For now, I'm going to have a motorcycle, a grand mansion, a roller coaster. I'm going to be a model and wear high heels and tons of makeup. I'm going to be famous, a super duper uber famous person. I'm going to have lots of money and a lifetime storage of ice cream and lollipops and one million jillion dogs. I'll be the best person ever. But that's 13 years away. I'm only seven. But that's the way it is for now. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a lifetime of walnuts? Lollipops and ice cream. Walnuts. 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 Put walnuts in there. One, two, three. I want to see them. Yeah, good. Oh, slope. Oh, slope. A six point nine. Seven point four, an eight point three, an eight point seven, and an eight point nine. Yeah. A twenty-four point four. All of them are beautiful. Lenin. Is he your chance? Our last slammer of round one, please put your hands together. It's Izzy. <laughs> I just realized how similar mine is to my sister's. <laughs> Alright, I may not seem like much to you, but one day, I'm going to change the world. I know, tons of people say that, but what's so special about me is my story is simple. I'm not going to be famous or get a Nobel Peace Prize. Instead, I'm going to be kind. I'm going to be nice, and I'll try to make everyone feel like they have a friend. While everyone snickers, I'm going to be the one that smiles. While everyone cheeses, I'll stand up. While others are quiet, I'm going to speak out. I'll leave no voice left unheard. And no matter how bad someone treats me, I'm, I'm still going to treat them like every other person on this planet. Yeah, yeah. My goal is simple. Make the world a better place. How? One smile can chase some, change someone's day. That one hey could lead to many more. But I can't do this alone. If everyone is just friendly, we can all change the world. I once heard a quote, be the change you wish to, wish to see in the world. Now you tell me. Do you want to say the rule with me? Yeah! yeah. Spanish. <laughs> Uno, dos, tres, tres. Oh, oh, seven point seven Ooh. from the perennial Mimi. <laughs> <laughs> eight point two, an eight point seven, an eight point eight, and an eight point eight. Hold them up again. I did yeah. miss you. I missed. I got the eight point two. I got the eight point seven. I got the seven point seven. I got. The, oh, there they are. Eight point eight. Nine eight to seventeen. Nine eight to seventeen. Eight, Twenty five point seven. Our official rules team has come up with the three finalists 
and has determined that they should perform in reverse order from how they performed the first time around, which means that opening our second act will be Olivia, stay with Nora Olivia, followed by oh, Hannah, no, it's stay where you are, Hannah, and finally Newton. And their total scores combined shall determine their eligibility for one of the fabulous prizes that are being offered today, thanks to River Rock School. Let's hear it for River Rock! <laughs> but as a special warm-up act to give those finalists an opportunity to get their feathers together, I'm going to offer Izzy an opportunity to offer us a second poem. We will not score it. And then Kaylee will have a shot. George will be welcome, etc. So if you don't have a little arrow by your name, I'm going to ask you if you'd like to perform. Izzy, would you like to offer us a second poem? Yeah. yeah. Woo! yeah Izzy. Welcome to the stage, Izzy. Woo! There are many flaws in society today. People who are always strong, always happy, always positive, or praised. They're rewarded for not failing, or not showing weakness, for being perfect. Newsflash, they will never be perfect. And those of us who see the world as it is, see the world as bad, corrupted, unkind, society rejects us. They disregard us. They try to help us. They brainwash us to make us like them. But what they don't see is our reasoning. The reason we see the glass half empty is because the glass needs to be filled. We see the world as a bad place because we've grown accustomed to being unkind. Even though I'm only 12, it's sad how ICE can see more than some adults. It's no wonder most Americans are afraid. I understand that to some point our depression can be bad. But think about this. Maybe it's good to think of the cons before the pros. But I know people want to brainwash us all. So why can't you just stop the people who make the world unkind? Even the people, <coughs> even the, those people, a positive percent of society can leave a negative impact on someone's life. There will always be the people who see the negative, but you can reduce the people who do the negative. I'm not saying brainwash them. You can't change someone's outlook on life, but you can try to change someone's output on life. Kids. Walk up to the kids who sit alone at lunch. Sit with them. Talk to them. You don't have to be their friend. Just, makes, just make them feel like they're not alone. Teens. Most of us use social media. We, can, we see the damage that it can do. Walk up to that kid that may have been hurt, either if they're at school or online. Tell them that what happened was not OK, that you don't believe in those hurtful words, that those people had no right to make them feel bad. Tell them that those bullies will go away. Just make them feel better. Adults, be the heroes of today. Show your kids that they can do good. Inspire them to change the world. I'm not saying you should um, change how they see the world. Just how the world sees them. Everybody, whether you see the glass half full or half empty, that's how you see the world. No one can change that but you. But how you feel about the world? Let those good people in society help, your, help change your feelings for the better. Now let me ask you, will you try to change the world? Oh, will you, no, try to change how others see the world, or will you try to change the world for the better? Thank you. State College back in 1956. 
It was a pond just outside the classroom. Down on the pond just over the hill, there lived a young muskrat, and his name was Bill. Bill was not as happy as he could be, so he went out looking for some company. He asked Tom Fox, have you seen Sally? And Tom replied, she's down in the valley. Bill found her there beneath a tree, and she was just as pretty as a muskrat could be. <laughs> Bill, got his, but Bill got up his courage, put his shyness aside, and he asked pretty Sally to be his bride. She said she'd marry if he'd never leave her, and so they were married by Deacon Beaver. Yeah. <laughs> there, was, there was a guy in the class by the name of Bill, and the teacher was a preacher on the weekend. Everybody was kind of pulled in there. To... <laughs> Olivia! Do you want to offer another one? She's one of our finalists. She said, Yeah, I don't have another one. You don't have another one? Well, then you can sit it out. Okay. What? I Everybody has that up. Oh, you're. She's a fine Oh, I see what I'm saying. Yeah. You, you better come up with one. <laughs> <laughs> Please give it up for Noel if she wants to. No, no. no. I got Hunter. You want to say another one for us? No. Did you just say no? No. Dan, you got another poem for us? Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I can say one. Please. All right. <laughs> Many, many years ago, when there was a loss in my family, I went into therapy to try and figure out how to handle it. Then a couple years ago, I found out that my therapist, who I really loved, had Alzheimer's. And that made me sad. This is called Your Voice Stays With Me. We never exchanged Christmas cards, though I must have tried post hoc to wit. You were Jewish, and I had no faith. But that was not why we would not be friends, whatever passions and occupations we in common have. It was the staggering intimacy of my almost hour, regurgitating anger and shame of being only me. But hell, the paradigms of principled privacy are simply breached by the grace of gratitude refreshing memory. You are still listening. Ears of past hearing the present for safekeeping and gut seeking on this perilous path. I stumble, of course, but I fall less to temerity and temptation with whispers of encouragement, an eyebrow of concern, and sweet forgiveness when I am deaf but acting dumb again and yet again. Anguish blew my sails, and grief gripped my tides to toss my sick soul into your gently knowing net. You never said much then or since, tendering me to some horizon of hidden truth with a curious view. It was magic. I could never see the tricks of my very own trade and only lost my guard in looking. You mind meaning when I was empty from excavating family fault lines, almost suffocating in the ether of life's too sad or fresh air to spare. The embrace of what you did not say comforts me when I am hideous and harsh as reflections of your wise inquiry light the darkness of doubt in all of my days. Woo! Nice job. Jim, you got another pause? Yeah, sure. Come in here for Jim, please. <laughs> There's another sad one. It's short, though. Let me get over it. <laughs> it's called To a Young Poet. Your hands lay palm up on either side of you. Beautiful wings of a moth at rest or pinned on display. No longer trembling over piano keys or searching for nubbins on a rock face 
but still and pure, as if it were through them your soul had passed. says, you guys need to go outside. Who came up with that crazy idea? <laughs> but hey, how bad could it be? Well, for a summer day, it was colder than most. So we went, si so after we were outside for a couple minutes, we went silently through the basement door and sat, plotting our revenge. <laughs> we were walking around thinking, how do we get upstairs? When there it was in front of our faces, the stepladder. So we carefully put it under the laundry chute and climbed up, step by step. And as I felt my hands touch the lid, I opened it and popped. And then there was my dad, standing at the closet door. What are you doing, he says. And that was that. I remember that. <laughs> that toward the end you were, it hadn't been written down and you were kind of extemporizing. You were freestyling, weren't you? Oh, it's good. The first freestyle of the day. Yeah. Lennon, you want to say one? Yeah. Good. Right. So I'm gonna think, so if, uh, I did make it a second one, but I didn't really like it. So I just uh, doing a thing and so I, I make it up as I go along, basically, but this is a true story. So, a few weeks ago, um, uh, we were at a pool in a hotel to go to the gaming convention when when my one of my best friends, Linda, uh, was learning how to swim, and she did the back float for 30 seconds. This was, I was really happy, and I was proud of her, until I heard that she got two packages and two pieces of lightsabers. Lightsabers. Light you know, the little candies that, you know, like, yes, that's what I said. <laughs> 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 lightsabers. <laughs> you know, those little candies that are like a little round, so. Um, I was really jealous, and I kept saying, they are making a mountain out of a molehill. Until now. Now, I'm really uh, happy, and I think that's perfectly worthy. <laughs> I love it. You know, for a moment here, I'm just going to buy a little time in case anybody needs to spruce up their poem. <laughs> I'm looking at my calendar, and I'm thinking, when will I have another exciting opportunity? When will there be great fun as much as we've had today, or almost as much? <laughs> and when will everybody here be welcome to come and perform during National Poetry Month. What? Wednesday. You didn't know it was National Poetry Month, Hunter? No. It is. Oh. Welcome to April. <laughs> April is when I have a job, and the rest of the 11 months, I sit around and look at my phone. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I like that. You should be writing. I should be writing. <laughs> <laughs> so when are we going to have fun again? Newton, when do you think we'll have fun again? At the end of April, at the Aldrich Library, or show up at Lost Nation Theater 
in a couple of days. Wow, I asked for one event, he named two. <laughs> Number one event in reverse order of what he offered. This coming Wednesday at Lost Nation Theater and Anything Goes Slam. Wow. Now, Anything Goes means it doesn't have to be original work. It could be work of Billy Collins or anybody. It can also be your own original work. But anything goes. It means also dancers are welcome to perform. Musicians are invited. I've had a fella came in second down in South Pomfret two years ago at an Anything Goes Slam. A young man, a little younger than you, Bruce. Me? Yeah. Oh. And the young man got up on stage and he did a judo demonstration and he pulled in second place. <laughs> Pretty amazing. Scared the judges. Well, <laughs> I'm gonna do knife throwing there. The main point is you get not three minutes, but up to five minutes on stage. Wow. Anything goes. Sign up at quarter till seven at Lost Nation Theater and be there as audience at seven. And then at six o'clock, if you'd like free pizza, the Aldrich Public Library at six. Use the back entrance, please. A reg no, it's another Anything Goes slam. At 6 o'clock, at 6.30, we'll have a brief writing activity. And then at quarter till 7, the slam itself begins. That's Friday, the last Friday of this month, just before it, on Wednesday the 25th at Lost Nation Theater. Now are we ready? Please put your hands together for round two. <laughs> I didn't have a name for this, but I just come, came up with it. Uh, out of my comfort zone. <laughs> uh, the church at the stone wall, best home fries in town. Love signs a must, hate signs are nuts. People on buses stop, broken cars are rusting. Walk, I, walk, I say, hey, you just, sorry, hey, you just cussed. Did you smell that? Smells like a skunk is rotten. <laughs> Judges, uh, on the count of three, they're furiously scrambling through their scorecards. On the count of three, judges, one, two, three, I want to see them, I got a, ooh, I got a, ooh, oh, girl. I got an eight point four, your eight is upside down. <laughs> Makes me wonder about all those sixes you were offering. 8.4, and 8.5, and 8.5, and 8.7, and an 8.9, 17 oh. carries from oh. 1 and 5.7. 6 and 7 is 13, 6 and 6, a 52.3 total. Oh my God. Oh. Yeah, you said 53.2. What did I say? 53.2. Well, you're wrong, because I wrote it down as 52.3. But I'm going to do my math. Oh, super. Yeah, I got it. Thank you, Ron. Let's hear it for Ron. Yeah. We no longer. It's Hannah. Okay, so my phone died, so I sure hope I remember this. Uh, it's called Seventeen. At seventeen years old, we danced the night away to an electronic beat, spinning on a melody, floating away. Teenage bodies soar higher than the clouds have so far to fall. When he came for seventeen of their bodies, emptied his magazine into their swirling vortex, I imagine I heard them fall like the branches of the aged maple 
Deep in the forest felt their ancient stone crumble. They have been here before, and we have been here before. Our bodies jingling in the pockets of those who should protect us. Bleached bone trading cards scattered on legislative floors. And maybe I'm tired of writing about this perverse dance, tired of treading on this floor taking care not to soak my shoes in their blood, collecting their teeth, a road map to nowhere. We are going nowhere, and the road to hell is not paved with good intentions, but with the bodies of 20 children who died within pastel walls, clinging to construction paper and magic markers. I don't know what words I can use when babies and bullets threaded together didn't move you. Yeah. Are kind of funny judges here for one, two, three? Let me see. Oh, I got a real meme. A nine point six. A nine point seven. A nine point nine. Another nine point nine. And a perfect ten. A twenty nine point five. A fifty seven point one for Hannah. Wait no longer. Here he is, Newton. <laughs> you don't need a phone, Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> Hearing voices, I'd call Grandma if I could. Back then, I used to call her on the phone. The kind you always knew where it was. <laughs> Lift the receiver from the cradle, and a voice said, Number, please. Her phone rings, one long, two short. If she didn't answer, another would. Party line. She ain't to home for three days, gone to Boston. Didn't worry about Homeland Security back then. Everybody listened in. <laughs> Many years have come and gone, and so too phones changing with stretchy cord. Phones reached out to touch somebody with a long, curly, tangly cord, taking the world's first bungee jump that lets you walk and talk and work with your own personal line. Later, a rotary dial, soon giving way to push-button musical melodies, and then freedom with a cordless phone, which brought together families in conversation. Why don't you leave the phone? <laughs> Today, we all worship with our own cool cell phone. Social conversation happens around us with people we can't see, bringing new complexity. I stepped out of my car curbside. Hi there, how are you? Came the voice of a man shingling Upon a roof looking up, I said, hello, as he turned away, a cell phone pressed against his head. Problems are no longer just calling people with, hi, where are you? But borrowing a phone to call your own phone with the same question. <laughs> <laughs> this year, at family Christmas, 21 people 
each with cell phones heard one ring. Seven reached like cowboys to draw their guns. <laughs> the number up for only one. Grandma liked to sit front porch and rock. Come, she'd say, let's talk. Grandma, if you can hear me these days, you ain't rocking, less you're walking when you're talking. <laughs> In today's world, everybody must get phoned. <laughs> Don't you love those scorecards? <laughs> you may not know it, but they actually have been photocopied from the Bible. Oh. <laughs> and I have copies in the back of my car. I, I carry them in the trunk in case anybody would want to buy one. Because, you know, it has those numbers all printed nice right on the pages. I mean, how could you do worse? I don't know. Don't answer. I'll count three judges. Well, two, three. I want to see them. Ooh, ooh. An 8.9. Ooh. A 9.5. Another 9.5. A 9.7. And a 9.8. 17, a 28.7, and 6 is 13, 6, a 56.3 total. <laughs> Hannah, will you step forward, please? <laughs> Through the generosity of the River Rock School, I can offer you a <laughs> two pints of gelato. Chill. I can offer you a mystery prize from Baguitos <laughs> and a book certificate from Bear Pond Books. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, I'll take the book certificate. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to hold on to the gelato. <laughs> Congratulations, Hannah. In second place, the amazing Newton Baker. Uh, Baguitos or, uh, ooh. <laughs> left hand. This one? That's my left. <laughs> this is your left. There you are, man. <laughs> It's unbelievable. Well, yes, a poem yeah. was born tonight <laughs> that we've never heard before. Please welcome Olivia to the <laughs> And as for the judges, Peggy, Bruce, Lynn, where are you, Lynn? I keep forgetting where you are. She told me her name was Virginia Wolf. <laughs> we got Michael, a nice job from Michael. And somebody else? Did we only, didn't we have one more judge? Yes. She's looking out the window. <laughs> Stephanie, let's hear for the judge. Yes. Let's hear for River Rock School. Woo! And let's hear for all the slams. Wednesday at Lost Nation oh, Theater. Yeah. We're about to have the rest of the Kelly Hubbard Library Home City programs right at the door. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs>